S cos theta. This is since I am taking a small area, so I should assume say d phi. So, d phi will be equal to and what is this? What is this? It is a scalar product. So, I can just write down E dot of d s. E is a vector quantity, area vector is also a vector quantity and this is a scalar. So, the electric flux is E dot of d s. Electric flux is equal to E dot of d s. Now, let us understand in a different way. Suppose I have a charge plus q, the electric lines of force will be radially out in all the directions. I am just assuming this particular side. Now, let us take some surface. Suppose just I am keeping the surface like this. What is happening to the electric lines of force? It is just crossing this surface. So, what is an uh, electric flux? The number of lines of force which is crossing the surface that is which is linked with this surface. Now, if I just extend these electric lines of force, so it means that it depends upon the area of the surface which I am considering. Now, secondly I am extending this, I am just keeping this here or other way suppose I said that if I am keeping the surface here, you are just seeing that the number of lines of force are crossing. Now, if I just take a bigger area, you will see that the more lines of force will cross. So, it means that it depends upon the area. Now, secondly, suppose if I am extending this and I am keeping the surface area, keeping this here it was in this way. Now, if I am keeping slightly far, you will see that the number of lines of force which is crossing the area is same, but the number of lines of force which is crossing is becoming less. Why? Because the electric field as you go away from the charge, the electric field decreases. So, it depends upon the two factors, the electric field and the area vector. So, in this way we can say that the electric flux is equal to nothing but E dot of surface area. Now, after understanding this, now one more thing. Suppose now, we have seen that in this case, it was just crossing. Now, if I am just keeping, if I just keep the surface like this, whether it is linking or whether it is going through the sheet, no. So, here what will be the electric flux now? It will be 0. So, for the electric flux, the lines of force should cross or should pass through the surface area which we are considering. So, if I am keeping like this, it is not crossing. So, here in this case, the position of the surface which I am considering here, it is what actually? It is 90 degree. So, it will be, it will be 0. So, in this way, we have seen that the electric flux is equal to E dot of d s. Now, let us after understanding the two important terms, we will just now define what is Gauss theorem and its application. Now, let us see if I just consider this surface, a spherical surface, if I just keep it here, can you tell me what will be the flux linked with the sphere? It will be 0. Why it will be 0? Because the number of electric flux which is entering is leaving. So, the total flux linked with the sphere will be 0. So, I can say that when they are parallel to each other that is an electric field and the area vector, the flux is positive and when they are anti parallel that is cos of theta, theta becomes 180, they are called negative flux. So, after understanding what is a vector area and electric flux, a Gauss theorem has correlated the, these two terms and he has given the statement that the total electric flux enclosed by the surface is equal to 1 by epsilon times the total charge around it. Now, let us see what a Gauss has said. Let us take an example. Suppose you have a charge and if you see that this will be the direction of the electric lines of force. So, if you just consider any such area, you can just divide the whole surface. Uh, this is a sphere which we have considered in the three dimension. So, this is a sphere. So, if you just assume you have a number of surfaces here, put together you will get a surface area of this sphere. So, I am just assuming one small surface. 
So, what the gauze has told? The flux linked with this area to d phi is equal to E dot of d l since these two are vector quantity. So, we will write like this. Therefore, what will be the total flux? It will be equal to this already we have done it the relation between a flux electric field and the area vector. Now, what the Gauss has said every time it is very difficult to count the lines of force electric flux. So, Gauss has given a easier way to find out directly what is the flux linked with some surface. So, he has said that the total flux linked with the surface is equal to 1 upon epsilon times the total charge enclosed in it. So, what I can write? Flux is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. So, this is a, a relation given by the flux. Now, we will see the application and before that we will see that one more important term we should understand what is a Gaussian surface. Suppose, if I assume a this is a chart. So, this surface which I have drawn is called as a Gaussian surface. Why it is called a Gaussian surface? Because at any point the Gaussian surface should satisfy one important condition that is at any point on that surface the magnitude of the electric field should be same and the direction of the electric field and the area vector should be same. Now, we will see the application. The first is the electric field due to a long charge wire or you can just assume a long charge rod also it is one and the same. So, let us assume this is the rod in which the charges are uniformly distributed. So, we can just assume suppose this is my uh, thin rod I can write a long charge wire or it is same as a thin long rod just assume this is a rod. So, you have plus charges which is being distributed equally. Suppose if you see the plus charge at here. So, how what will be the lines of force here? It will be acting radially. Similarly, if you just assume here it will be acting radially. Similarly, the center it will be acting radially. So, if you assume now we have to assume what is a, we have to assume a Gaussian surface. So, can you tell me what will be the Gaussian surface in this particular case? We have to uh, it has to satisfy a two condition that is at any point on that surface the electric field should be same. So, can you guess suppose if I want to find an electric field at this particular point say P. So, what will be the Gaussian surface? Of course, it has to pass through the point P and any point other than the P the electric field should be same. So, what it will be? It has to be a cylinder. So, what will be the Gaussian surface for this? It will be a cylinder. So, just let us draw same distance from here also. So, first point you should remember that whenever we are applying a Gauss theorem to find the electric field in an uniformly distributed charged body, we have to first find out what is Gauss theorem. Just remember this point. What is the first point you should remember? Gauss, Gaussian surface you should first find out. Then once you have found out the Gaussian surface here in this case it is cylinder. Now, let us see the cylinder is having how many faces or it can be whole divided into three regions say this is my first region, second region and the third region. So, it will be something like this say the, the pencil which I have inserted is acting like a, a rod and this surface is my Gaussian surface. So, how many faces are there? 1, 2, 2 circular faces and 1 is the curved surface. So, there are 3 I am just can divide this into 3 region first, second and third. Now, let us find out what is the flux linked with this region. First, if you take a first region and of course, the second. 
What will be the flux linked with this? Just go back to the actual definition of the electric flux. It has to cross normally. Here, how the flux is moving? It is moving radially out. So, there is no flux linked with this surface. So, the electric flux in the region first and the second will be 0 and mathematically also we can show it. So, in region one and two, the electric flux will be zero. How let us see? Phi is equal to E dot of say some area say ds. So this is equal to E ds here. What is that? It is perpendicular and cos 90 is 0. So, phi is equal to 0. Now, let us see in the third region what is happening. In the region third, it is crossing normally. So, you will have an electric flux. So, this is the surface where the electric flux are crossing normally. So, there will be an electric flux in the curved surface. So, let us by using a formula, we will find out the electric flux. So, what is an electric flux in that particular region? Say, it, you can just assume a small area and then you can integrate it. So, d phi will be equal to E dot of ds. So, the total surf flux will be equal to integral of over a closed surface ds. And what will be the total surface area? We are assuming what? Curve surface area. So, what is the formula for the curve surface area? It is 2 pi R L. Suppose this is the length of a rod around which we have drawn a Gaussian surface and the point P at which we are finding a electric field is at a distance of say R. So, we have flux is equal to E 2 pi R L. This is first equation. Now, we are going to apply a Gauss theorem. So, we have seen that by using uh, just a formula for the electric flux, we got one expression. Now, second what we will do in the same way, we will find out, we will write according to the Gauss theorem, what is the flux? What is my main aim? I want to find an electric field at point P due to this charge body. So, by using Gauss theorem, what I can write? What is the Gauss theorem? It is 1 upon epsilon naught total charge enclosed. Now, let us see what is a total charge enclosed because it is a long rod. So, we can just assume suppose lambda is the charge per unit length. What is lambda? It is charge per unit length. So, what will be the total charge Q will be if L is the length of the rod? It will be equal to lambda into L. So, instead of Q, we can substitute lambda into L. So, flux is equal to lambda L upon epsilon naught. So, this is equation 2. So, if you see in equation 1, this is also representing an electric flux. This is also representing an electric flux. So, we can equate the 2. So, what we will get? E 2 pi R L is equal to lambda L upon epsilon naught. So, this L and L will get cancelled. What is my main aim? I have to find electric field. So, let us write E is equal to So, we are seeing that lambda is constant, epsilon naught is constant and 2 pi is constant. So, what I can write? E is inversely proportional to the distance at which you want to find an electric field. So, more the distance, more the, the, more the point P is more far from the rod, the electric field will be less. So, what you have to remember students, you will just see first of all whatever a body is given, you just draw a Gaussian surface. What is the condition for drawing a Gaussian surface? At any point on the Gaussian surface, the electric field should be same. So, first draw the Gaussian surface. Then second, what you do? You just find out an electric flux by using an actual formula for the electric flux. 
Then second what you should do? You apply a Gauss theorem. Then equate it, you can get the relation. Okay, now let us see uh, some of the uh, very simple numericals. If you understood the basic, you can just very well without solving, you can say orally also. So let us see. Suppose you have plus 2 coulomb charge is being placed in a cuboid. So now my question is what is the flux in this surface which I have drawn it? How will you do it? Yes, if you see just directly we can apply Gauss theorem. What is that? This is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. What is the charge here? Flux is equal to 2, 2 by epsilon naught. Just we can put the value of epsilon naught and can get the value. Well, next is suppose you have a surface here and I am keeping my charge here. Now what is the flux linked with this surface? Yes, anyone? It will be 0. Why? Because according to the Gauss theorem, the charge has to enclosed in the surface. But here the charge is outside. So what is the flux here? 0. Now if you just take, suppose you have plus 5 coulomb and minus 5 coulomb. Now suppose if I draw a, a surface, what will be the flux linked with the surface? Yes, anyone? It will be 0. Why? Because the total charge inside will become 0. So when the charge is 0, the flux will be 0. In other words, we can say actually it is making a dipole system. So suppose you see the lines of force, number of lines of force which is leaving this point is entering. So the total flux again will be 0. Thank you students. So tomorrow we will continue with the more of application. Thank you.